Good morning. This is uh, Dr. Gast, and I want to welcome my students to the GBS 151 with GSC Introduction to Business at Mesa Community College. Uh, while this is an online class, I wanted to supplement it with videos, and uh, we'll have midweek on Wednesdays live sessions, record them, and you can review them whenever you wish. So the point here, we want to look at some of the key concepts from the first chapter. Chapter one is exploring the world of business and economics. You still need to read the textbook, but let's just talk about some of the reasons you might be studying business. Uh, that uh, not only from a career point of view, but also talking in terms of uh, how to be an employee. Uh, some people, uh, it may be new to you, how to work. Some of you maybe have been working for some time. But one of the things that we can count on is that there is diversity in the workplace, meaning there is going to be a lot of people that do not look like you, have different backgrounds, uh, religions, or no religion. It could be a mixed bag. Uh, we want to emphasize how that is important because that gives you strength in different approaches to decision making. But more about that as we move along. Uh, we're going to try to improve your management skills. Uh, maybe some of you uh, plan to be an entrepreneur, uh, start your own business, and this will give you some ideas as well. Uh, so uh, who makes the most money? Maybe that motivates some of you. Why well, maybe you're going back to school, um, or going into further furthering your education, uh, the high school graduate just on this this is based on figures from a couple years ago. Unfortunately, a lot of things are between uh, a recession that's taking place and COVID virus. This is also a problem for us. But let's just talk in general terms. A high school graduate will make uh, around fifty seven thousand dollars a year. If you have a little bit of college, so maybe some of you have uh, been in college um, trying to work on an associate's degree, uh, if you have a little bit of college, you could boost that, boost that by probably $10,000 a year, meaning uh, instead of the $57,000, you're now looking at $67,000. Uh, if you can get your AA degree, that is seen another step up by ten thousand dollars or around seventy seven thousand but the person with a bachelor's degree the four-year degree or some advanced degree generally on average is one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars a year so over a lifetime the investment in education is something that from uh, the employee's point of view is very desirable from the employer we could talk about why they want to have somebody with a degree, but more important than anything else is the critical thinking, meaning there's some independent thought, how do you arrive at decisions, and the fact that you uh, can have ethics. That Those are the two major areas businesses say they want. So let's define business. It is an organized effort of individuals to produce and sell for profit the goods and services that satisfies society's needs. Now that's a mouthful. There's a lot there. I want you to look at it more closely in the textbook. The key here, for profit, if it's a nonprofit, it's not generally not classified as a business, it would be a nonprofit organization. So business need to make a profit that are not going to be around. And maybe some of you have experienced that. Well, there's um, a lot of jobs have been eliminated, uh, or you may be furloughed. Uh, they have to make a profit to continue to exist. Um, but they also need to be fair in the way that they uh, have relationships with employees or uh, suppliers and things of that sort. Uh, there, we generally see a organization taking something or some type of raw material can even be information and converting it into output that's our system that we're looking at we'll be using material sources in some cases like raw materials uh, if you're building something 
Um, it could be uh, that we're in an information, we have knowledge workers, so we're gathering data, right, information, and we're converting that or organizing in such a way that someone will pay extra money for it. Um, we look at human resources as the structure. Um, that relationship is saying, how do you get paid? How do, are you evaluated? How are you terminated? Um, we have to have some kind of structure around human resources. Uh, financial resources, that is the, that we, not only the paychecks for the employee, but how we purchase goods and services of, to keep the operation going. And then there's information resources, and this is our dashboard, which is quite common today. Uh, and, and, and the computer use of uh, collecting data, uh, and even big data now is a big is an issue. Saying that uh, we have computers gathering data for us and sharing, so this has changed the way we do business. And you noticed during the COVID nineteen. A lot of uh, work went um, remote or from our homes or doing it uh, by the computer. And that is possible certainly by the data that we have and the telephone, computers, things of that sort. So how we combine those resources uh, determines what services or goods that we're providing. Uh, this is a result of individuals. So we usually have either a service business where we have either the product, um, haircuts for instance, uh, is um, so you're selling haircuts. It means that you have to have equipment such as scissors, razors, um, things of that sort to, to do your work. And once you perform that service, there's the output of the final haircut. Uh, some of you may be looking at uh, an information, starting your own business um, on giving advice uh, or tax preparation. That's, uh, that's a, a, a way to organize what you're trying to do to give value to the customer. Uh, so you have to produce or manufacture of converting those goods into something. We also have marketing uh, marketing ways that we communicate and get people interested in our products. And then uh, we also have to look at uh, how that information is dissimulated. We are used to walking into a store, having um, a sales representative uh, provide us with further information for us to make decisions. A lot of that has moved online today because of the virus situation. Um, so we refer to e-business is that when we are selling uh, products or services in an online environment. Profit is necessary. It's, it's what remains after all the business expenses have been deducted from the revenue. So if you're selling something, uh, let's say you're selling a tire, it costs so much to make that tire and the actual costs, you would then subtract whether what marketing efforts, uh, you would also have um, the uh, any discounts, anything that you adjusted that, that would have to go into on the bottom line, subtracting out what your profit is. We have then revenue, what's coming in, minus the cost, and then you have your profit that remains. We also have a term that we use, stakeholders. And these are different people or groups uh, who is affected by the policies or decisions the organization makes. Profit is that reward. That's the reason the companies, companies take risks and they, they are rewarded. Some are rewarded more handsomely than others. It could be timing, let's say in fashion, that you hit the right um, product, the, the, uh, something that's popular, and uh, people are willing to pay more money for it. But you, the profit part of it is what the owners are motivated 
in order to stay in business. It is also the payment that business owners receive for assuming that amount of risk. So there's always a certain amount of risk. You could produce something, let's say, uh, something fashionable like a, 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 this top that I'm wearing. But if it falls out of favor, let's say it's not the right material, it's not, um, uh, the style is not popular, then that's a risk that we take uh, and our profit will be less. Or if we got it perfect, our, and, and uh, we can then have a far greater level of profit. When we talk about economics, this term economics is a study of how wealth is created and distributed in, this, in the United States. That's where our focus is the United States. Economics is throughout the world, but uh, our economic system uh, we will define more fully. There are two levels that we can talk about. Microeconomics is a study of the decisions made by individuals and the businesses. When we talk macroeconomics, we're now looking at the study of a national economy or a global economy. So micro, macro gives us uh, different perspectives. Uh, they may be the same and sometimes uh, it's very different. The economy, another definition. We throw these words around um, in our daily conversations, but when we put it in a business setting, very specific economy. It's the way in which people deal with the creation and distribution of wealth. So what kinds of economic systems? Uh, production. This is how we produce the good, goods and services. So there's natural resources. If you're in the steel business, you're going to be looking for certain uh, uh, minerals to be able to use to produce the steel. Uh, if it's uh, food production, you will need certain uh, items to, that make up. If you're in a dairy operation, let's say you're making cheese, you need a dairy operation. You need the uh, input uh, from uh, the animals. But that is not sufficient. You will be adding other things to convert it into the product to the consumer. You, that includes the labor. The labor is the time and effort used to produce the goods and services. And we labor would be, uh, we use this term labor as it's not only the employees who are on the front line, but also the managers, the supervisors. This is all part of labor. It's whatever it takes to get the product produced. Capital, as used in a business setting, is the money, equipment, machines uh, in operating the facility. So if you have a dairy herd, for instance, your operation will use uh, milking machines. Uh, if you're uh, in a textile business, your looms, you know, your weaving machines is going to be part of your investing in that capital. Uh, capital is usually seen as something hard and tangible. Uh, that it can be soft, but uh, it's something that uh, you invest in and you have it over a long period of time. Like the chair I'm setting in, that would be capital that you would invest in. Uh, entrepreneurship. Term, uh, I'm sure this is not a new term to you, but let me just be clear that it's an activity that we, where we organize land and natural resources, labor and capital. We take all of that and pull it together. And the person who uh, starts up uh, an entrepreneurship or a startup company would be called an entrepreneur. They do take a high level of risk and it does take money, anticipation. Number one reason um, that startups fail within the first year is lack of capital, that first money capital. So you run out of money. We're almost through, so bear with me here. Uh, there's two different economic systems, capitalism and command economies. And this is worthy to talk about because uh, capitalism uh, is certainly the way uh, we conduct business in the United States. But it's not pure capitalism. 
would say if you look at a sliding scale, it's going to slide a little bit um, back and forth. And let me explain the difference here. It's the way that we, um, if we look at basic questions, it may not be true, just purely transactional, uh, where your you, you pay it it costs so much to produce it, and that's you know it's transactional. We put so much money in, and you pay us for what we have to have uh, with uh, some profit. But we have to make some decisions in this economic system and say where are we going to produce these goods, um, and who are they going to produce for, and who owns. Uh, the equipment now so we're finding a lot of uh, where there's not vertical integration like there used to be uh, let's take for instance um, I have an agriculture background as well as an HR and uh, business management bear with me my agriculture background shows up here you have a dairy operation and you could say that uh, so we have family operation so why can't we just put butter straight to the market that's vertical integration where you control all the way through we're producing it we're mil milking the cows we're taking the cream off the top and we're turning that into chunks of butter packaged and ready to go into the consumer most dairy operations are not organized that way uh, that's what they sell to the next level for instance, the dairy farmer takes their milk, usually goes to a co-op here in Arizona, it usually goes to United Dairymen of Arizona, and then the dairyman will then sell it to the manufacturer, like Shamrock Foods, might say, give us your cream, we will produce butter, package it, and then you can see then uh, a label that's called Shamrock Foods. I I'm not sure if they have that label. But we can see it with um, uh, Kroger brand with fries. They do that. So there is this selling from one business to another business to another business to where it finally comes to the, um, the consumer. So my question is, in the economic system, is who is your customer? Uh, I worked for many years in the beef industry. And what we would have these arguments between the feedlot operator. Let's see, so we would have the rancher, and then they would sell it to the feedlot operator. Feedlot operator would sell it to the packing house, who would then uh, take that once the animal was slaughtered and it would then be packaged, went into box beef, which was huge 40 or 50 years ago. That was uh, technology. You used to have hanging sides of beef, they uh, boxed it. And so uh, you didn't have to buy the whole side of beef. You could buy just a quarter of the section. And then it changed even further today where a lot of that is packaged, prepackaged at the packing, or excuse me, yes, I guess at the packing house. And they box it, but they're also putting it into consumer packaging. And all the meat cutter has to do at the store, open up the box, take out the packages, and put it in. This is a, a radical change from a few decades ago. So we're constantly changing, and we have to say, you know, what part of the operation, who are you selling it to, uh, will make a difference in saying uh, how you price it uh, and also how you're going to make your profit. Capitalism is an economic supply system. Uh, this is where individuals own and operate the majority of businesses that provide goods and services. So we don't have government owning uh, our dairy farms. I don't know why I'm picking on dairy today, but I'm just in. Um, I've worked in the tomato industry. I used to be a product manager for tomatoes, a tomato expert. And we, we could say in capitalism that we had 90% of the tomatoes that came out of California went into a processing facility, and we ended up with canned tomatoes. Uh, this privately owned. It's not government owned. And that is what capitalism is saying that is a free market and it's based on supply and demand. So capitalism here in the United States 
uh, generally it's free. But we have situations, for instance, uh, where government programs like the Farm Bill uh, has a cap on uh, the bottom saying that the prices for butter can't fall below a certain price. Uh, I'm in, so milk, milk prices, milk support. And so then government steps in, and the reason they do that is to say that we don't want to ever have a situation where we don't have enough milk uh, for our population in this country. They also do it for cotton. So if we need to produce uh, uniforms for our soldiers, that we have sufficient cotton. That's a policy that comes out of Washington, D.C. They produce the Farm Bill every five years. So that's an example of a support system, this government, that puts some controls on the market. That's the reason I say it's on a sliding scale. We're not pure capitalism, uh, it's, but the principles is in that area. If you took the same concept and took it to uh, China today, China has changed dramatically over the last couple of decades in which uh, they are embracing, they still have a communistic, and we'll talk in a moment about communistic, where the government controls it, but they also have opened up for capitalism. So you have billionaires coming now out of China because they were able to uh, produce goods as capitalistic. However, the government, much stricter controls, they can step in at any time and uh, they have more authority to um, control it. And so it's less desirable from an American point of view, but you need to respect that throughout the world there are different ways to look at economic systems. And, and in a global environment, we're really a mix of things. So we don't, you need to respect, don't, don't uh, throw these words around carelessly. Uh, you should respect that there is a place for each, uh, and it just uh, our focus is saying as a capitalist, we're interested in being responsible, meaning we're not just going to cheat or uh, cause harm to the environment or to people for a profit, but we are in the business of making a profit. There's an invisible hand that they will talk about. Uh, Adam Smith was from Scot Scotland. Uh, during, and we've seen different things about Adam Smith, and he um, he looks at individual personal gain benefits others and the national economy by paying taxes and things of that sort. Uh, in capitalism, we also have a term called laissez-faire, which is actually a French term, and it means hands off, meaning it's from a capitalistic, is that government doesn't interfere in the economy. Now we know there's times that that's not true. Our government will have price supports, uh, their rent control, like in New York City. Um, so w if you're purely capitalistic, you're gonna have problems with that. But I'm saying as a society, we also have to be responsible. That's say fair, hands off. And, and that's what most, uh, I think, business people see. They want that independence. Uh, I like to describe it this way. It's like a pendulum. And it swings one way and then it swings the other way. What I'm talking about is a business is given a great deal of freedom to operate. But when they abuse, uh, there's um, some problems in society the way that they are managing their operation. For instance, let's say they're polluting uh, um, water, the water we drink. Here in Arizona, could be the groundwater. We're piping also, um, we've got water coming from the Central Arizona Project in the big ditch that goes from the, uh, uh, from, uh, the Colorado River and comes into Phoenix all the way down toward Tucson. Very expensive water, but it's important water. And if somebody polluted that, and let's say you were um, um, producing something and your chemicals, you let them 
leach or go into the water supply, well, the government's going to step in. They're going to have a problem with that. So you want to be responsible if you just say to avoid litigation. But you also, you live in this society, and so uh, you're a part of it. We talk about a market economy, and that's an economic system. Uh, that's It's where the individuals decide, and business, individuals make up a business, and they decide what to produce and buy, and the product or the market, the market will determine the qualities and prices. So this is the uh, free market that I was talking about, is that you can, um, if you want to start a business in Arizona, uh, you have the freedom to start that. If you can find the resources, put things together. Again, there may be some things we've had like in uh, south of uh, Phoenix, uh, when we get down to the town of Maricopa, we pulled a lot of the groundwater um, and that groundwater replenishes at a very slow rate so we don't get a lot of rain. So we have certain areas where the, the uh, um, land has sunken in. Uh, they're trying to control that. Again, that's when you're free market, you have government coming in and putting some restrictions uh, saying if you want to build a plant, you need to understand where, where you're getting the water to, um, if it's a high, certain, certain types of businesses have very high water use. That's a problem right now in the city of Maricopa. If those of you that live in that area, uh, it's, uh, they're trying to put some processing. And I think they're putting in a um, battery uh, for vehicles uh, down in, uh, outside of Maricopa. And so that's, that's going to be the challenge in saying um, how you use water and where are you getting it. So our economy is a mixed economy. And what it means by that is there's four basic questions. What, how, for whom, and who. So what are the households, consumer products? Who's purchasing these? Do we have to ship them across the country? We do a lot of vegetables out of the Yuma area. Lettuce for the whole country. We have a year round. You have to truck it. Uh, if you look at Amazon, where is Amazon uh, putting their warehouses? They're putting them to, uh, for cross-country uh, use. By the way, there's an interesting debate going on right now. We are now seeing the, some testing of uh, driverless trucks. It's going so it's going to impact a variety of things. We'll talk more about this. Uh, if you're a truck driver, which is I think one of the, t there are more people driving trucks, whether short term, long term. It's one of the largest occupations. So this is going to have some impact. Uh, so technology comes in and adjusts. Uh, it's certainly by the company we're going to see that and say, well, we can reduce our costs but we're also going to displace a lot of workers who are driving. And so the, you have to work very closely with your community, whether it's local, state, or national, to say, uh, how do we take care of people who may be losing their jobs? We also look at businesses and governments. So the relationship in saying a household who's buying it, businesses, what's the structure of our business, and the role of government in what we're trying to do. So I'm going to stop at this point. I think it's really important to uh, to use terms appropriately. Uh, as educated individuals, and you don't have to have a college degree to be educated, and hopefully those of you that are get a degree are educated, and what we mean is you have critical thinking, and you can think about the words you use you're responsible. So when we say, oh, they're a communist, you need to understand what the word means. Uh, if we say that uh, we are a capitalist society, is to understand the true, we're not purely, we are a combined uh, economy. So we're going to use capitalism, but we're also going to be very responsible in doing that. All right, some basic words. That's so as we move through 
this um, this course, you will understand what those words mean, and uh, it'll, it'll make it easier for you. Okay, that's our beginning. Uh, I will be uh, in touch through announcements, uh, through my recorded um, time discussions that we have together, as well as these little mini lectures. So let me know if you need any help, and I'll talk to you Wednesday.